Hey, you guys. <laughs> Thanks for coming. I know that this is kind of like a, a little impromptu live. Um, and I'm having some coffee. What are you girls doing? There's four people here. Are there four people who gave a thumbs up? <laughs> I see Linda Parsons here and Sharon uh, Vashon is here. Except where the binding intersects. Do you mean um, like when you're putting it together on the first side? Okay, well, let me kind of um, talk a little bit about what I'm doing. Hi, MJ Sos. <laughs> uh, I don't know how many of you guys were on the live that I had on Wednesday. Um, I do a live stream every Wednesday at 8.30 Eastern Time. And um, I've been doing that for quite some time now. Um, occasionally I have to cancel, unfortunately, but that happens. Um, hi, Linda Denton. Hi, Kathleen. Teresa is here. Hi, Teresa. Uh, Pam's here. Hey, Pam. I haven't seen you in an in age. So, anyway. Um, hey, Grendel. I... I Here's the thing. I, I'm going to try so hard to stop talking all the time about blah, 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 blah. I want to be here um, to sew with everybody. Okay. So on Wednesday, we had, or I had someone new come and join the discussion or, you know, the, the chat that we were having on Wednesday. And she was telling me that every weekday morning, she gets up and she watches Becky Thompson over at Power Tool with Thread, Power Tools with Thread, sorry. Um, and I thought, you know, one of my biggest complaints, uh, if I'm, you know, are one of my biggest things is that I don't get to sew as much as I would like to because I've got this going on with that going on and blah, 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 blah. Okay. Well, you know what? I, I think I'm going to try to do a daily live as well and see what we can do. Now, here's what I'm going to, here's what I'm going to say. If you are available at 7 a.m. Central, Monday through Friday. That's 7 a.m. Central, that's 8 Pacific, 6 Mountain, or 5 Pacific. Y'all gotta go watch Becky, because Becky knows her stuff. She's really good. Um, and she goes on um, for about an hour and she's been sewing, and a lot of what she sews is, um, or from from everything I've watched anyway, because I, I like to watch her as well. Um, she does a lot of traditional piecing, and she's got excellent tips about, you know, do this. She, she shows you everything that she does, and she tells you why. I love that. That, to me, that is amazeballs. Um, hi, Jessica. Um, so I just think she's, you know, definitely if you have time, I would go and watch her and she's Monday through Friday. Um, like I said, 7 a.m. Central. Um, and so I thought if I can start doing this now, I don't know if I'm going to just do Monday through Friday or am I going to try to throw in some weekends, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to, I'm definitely going to put, uh, the notification up the day before, um, saying, you know, when, when it's going to be, if it's going to be, you know, all of that kind of stuff so that you guys know. But that'll also help me to be able to get a little more sewing done. And I'm not always going to have like some kind of 
tutorial um like how to put a binding on or, or anything like that but i'm gonna try to if you guys have any requests you know go ahead and uh email them to me or put it in the comments and um and we can get to doing that but today i am going to uh put a binding on <laughs> what what i'm lovingly calling my practice quilt uh it's the one that i actually did get finished on the long arm but i did i um quilted all kinds of crazy stuff on it y'all like i just i i was like okay i want to try this pattern i want to try this pattern i mean so it's a quilt it's a lap quilt um and the cats commandeered it but i have to put a binding on the darn thing so i thought i will put a binding on the darn thing and so <laughs> i made my binding boop and yes, I, I put it on a binding baby, but if you don't have a binding baby, honestly, like almost anything will work. Um, in fact, one of my great friends, <laughs> Sherry Geyer, hope you don't mind me shouting you out, Sherry. Um, but she basically m puts hers on a toilet paper roll. I'm not kidding. She, she just takes a toilet paper roll. She wraps her, uh, her binding up on it. She hangs it around her neck. It's great. And then she just sews it on and it unrolls off the toilet paper roll as she's putting it, y'all, seriously. Uh, <laughs> um, oh, MJ, I'm learning my long arm. So let's not get excited, okay? Because I am still having, like right now I'm having huge issues, but I'm, I'm quite certain it's user error. I need to learn how to uh, get my tension right and everything because right now every time I start... Um, long arming the thread breaks it's quite frustrating the last time I was working on it was on it was either Saturday or Sunday I don't remember and I have not gone over there since because I was quite frustrated I mean I was working on it for over 12 hours that day and I had to yeah I had to stop because I was getting really 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 frustrated um, anyway, so the first thing I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to show you, just in case you are brand spanking new quilting and you just don't even know how to make a binding, perfectly fine. Um, let me change my camera angle. If I can get my mouse over there. Boop. Okay, so I've already made all my binding, but I've got one strip that was extra. Now, I'll tell you... Um, it does not matter how you want to measure, and I'm using this cute little um, fabric from uh, Ruby Star Society. <laughs> uh, so anyway, it, it doesn't matter how you want to make yours. Typical, like a standard um, binding would use two and a half inch strips. I like mine a little bit, um, I like mine a little bit thinner. And so I go, I use two and a quarter inch strips. And I make my strips using my AccuQuilt um, cutter. So, because when I try to cut fabric, it goes all skewy and it, it drives me nuts. So I, I started using the AccuQuilt and now I won't use anything else. But that's just me. You can either cut two and a half inch strips, two and a quarter inch strips. Heck, you could do two inch strips if you want. It's all up to you. Um, so anyway, what you would do if you are going to make your binding is you want to take your strips. So you're going to basically like measure all the way around your entire quilt and you're going to get that number and you want to add like a good 10 to 15 inches. The more the better, just to let you know, just, I, you know, because you're, I'll show you why when you're going to the end and you're going to put the pieces together, it's better to have it longer. So even if you want to go up to like 20 inches, whatever, just make sure it's well over 10 inches. Okay. Now you're going to want to sew all of those strips together end to end and how you're going to do that. I'm going to, let me move my keyboard and everything. I'm going to try to get it to an area where you can see it. All right. Where is it back there? Okay. So I'll stand up. So you're going to have one end here. I'm just going to use the same strip. It doesn't really matter because it's the same, same concept. You're going to take the second one and you're going to have it, um, with the two 
pretty sides t facing each other, right? Just like that. And you're going to want them to be as, and, and honestly, pretty forgiving. It really is not, it doesn't have to be perfect, but you want them perpendicular to each other. Okay, and then I just pretty much take a pin and I just put one right there and I put one right here just to hold them together so that I don't have to worry about picking it up and everything. And this is, whoop, whoop, <laughs> I'm going to get better at this, guys. Um, and this is how it's going to look when you pin it. Okay, and now you're going to want to draw um, a, a line across from end to end where they join. Now, once you start doing, you've done this for a while, you really don't have to draw the line, but I, I tend to do it, and I'll tell you why. I don't think that drawing lines or doing any of that stuff or not doing it means you're a better quilter. Absolutely not. I personally am a perfectionist, so I try very hard to get things as perfect as possible, like all the time. So anyways, I I just put my ruler down. I can see it's right in the corner there, and it's right in the corner here. And I take my friction pen, and I just draw a line right across. All right. And so you can see that right there. I've got the line, and so I know exactly where to sew. So then I just sit at the sewing machine, and um, I have my uh, stitch length at 2.5, but you can do 2.0 if you want. You really don't have to, though. Uh, this binding is going to be folded over, um, and so it's going to reinforce itself, okay? So then you just sew across on that line. And then I also clean everything up. That's a preference too. I don't like having threads hanging all over the place. Um, okay, so once I have sewn across that line, I don't even, at this point, I don't really use um, uh, like a rotary cutter and all that. I just cut about a quarter inch from the line I sewed. Okay. And then I press my seams open. And so I, I use my little poplar presser over here. I know you can't see that, but I'm going to press it and then I'll show you. Alright, so I press it. And then I just um, roughly cut the little dog ears off. Or honestly, you could even leave them because when you start uh, putting your binding on, you could cut them off of the edge there. You can leave. I mean, you know, it's it's really up to you. Nobody's going to see that. Now, what I do is, let me just cut this so we can make it look like a, like it's an actual strip. All right. So then after you have pressed that seam, you're just going to go over to your ironing board and you're just going to put it wrong sides together to make it a double fold. And now this is, uh, you know, you can buy bias tape and stuff like that to do your bindings and that's just fine if that's what you want to do. Um, but this is if you want to use a specific fabric that you like. Um, so anyway, that's how I made, whoop, just took my binding baby out. That's how I made my binding. It's just folded over. In fact, I haven't even cut my dog ears off on there. <laughs> um, so I'm going to start um, putting my binding on. And this is the little practice quilt that I did. And I mean, seriously, like, you can see it on the, on the front there. Uh, it's a jelly roll race that I did at um, the last retreat I had. And I just, like I said, I just did like some practice stuff on it. All right, so for me, what I like to do is I will, um, if there's like a certain design on the quilt, sometimes I will decide, oh, where do I want to start, um, you know, quilting? Like, where do I want the, the connected end to be? Do I want it to be at the end? Do I want it to be along a side? I mean, it really, it doesn't matter unless it matters to you. 
All right, so I'm gonna try to put my coffee a little bit further away. So I'm gonna probably put it like on one of the ends. So what I'm gonna do is I'll just, I take my quilt and I just start rolling it up a little bit. Just so that it's not um, willy nilly bunched up somewhere. This way it's like, you know, it's manageable along the side. Of course, I've got so much stuff on my table here, though. It's still going to run into stuff, but it'll be better. So I'll try to. All right. So I'm going to just set it there. And I'm just going to start dragging my binding out. And I'm gonna start mine. Uh, like I want to leave, I want to leave a tail. So don't start right on the end. You want to like start, like I said, like 10 inches in, you know, or 12 inches in. And then I'll just start that somewhere. I'll put it like right here. And I don't pin or anything. I just start. And, you know, go about a quarter inch, but there's, like I said, there's really no right or wrong whenever you're putting a binding on. And I will take, um, yeah, I use 2.5. I do three stitches. I go back three. And then I do that again. Only because when you're going to go to, um, join the ends i find that if i don't have to worry about those stitches coming out the better and so i always do it i i probably do overkill but you know that's what i do all right that I love putting bindings on it's like my favorite part I say favorite because it took me a long time to figure out how to uh, join my ends every time that I had to put a binding on y'all I mean, I'm not kidding I would cry because I knew I wasn't gonna be able to figure it out and every time I would watch people putting it on and joining their ends they, they would just, it was either it was too fast or the camera angle would be like wrong and I couldn't figure it out. All right, so when I'm coming to the end, I'm almost there. I'm just going to take my ruler and this is just to give me peace of mind because you could just eyeball it. It's not that big a deal. I take the line on my ruler that's the quarter inch and I put it right on the edge of the quilt. And then I just draw the line, just a slight line, so I know where that quarter inch is. And then I sew right up to that line. And I like to reinforce the corner as well. So I back stitch, I forward, I back, I forward. And then you want to lift your presser foot and you're going to turn it so that there's like a little point um, right there. Let me see if I could get that zoomed in. I'm not sure if it'll let me zoom in anymore because I think I zoomed all the way in. Yeah, it's already all the way zoomed in. But I can see like when you're when you have your your quilt and it's pointing at you, the very point of it of the of the corner is pointing directly at me. Also on my machine, I've got a line that goes straight down. Um, it, like even with the needle so that point should be pointing right at that and when it is I just lower my presser foot and then I just sew right down into that corner and like I said I like to reinforce so I just I go back and then I stitch off all right where's my little scissors and I just clean that up a tiny little bit all right, now I'm going to turn the quilt and I'm going to re-roll it. 
the other way. Oh, I gotta go this side. And like I said, I do this just because, peace of mind. If I gotta start fighting with it, it drives me nuts. I don't like fighting with it. So I roll it. Whatever works for you, do that. <laughs> okay. So now when you turn it, you're gonna lay the, the uh, binding out. Make sure you can see that. Kind of come over here. And then you're gonna take it and you're gonna fold it up so that the binding is lined straight up. So you're gonna have, it's gonna, it's gonna make like a straight line going straight up. Finger press that down and then holding that, just fold it down right on top of itself and on the left side you'll see that it is lined up with itself right so it's making a straight line and then now it's going straight down the side of the quilt and you have like a straight line now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this under the needle we're gonna start right on the edge at, at the quarter inch or whatever it is you've been sewing here. And you're just gonna start sewing down just with it like in this position. Okay, so let's do that. And again, I'm gonna reinforce that by back stitching and I usually go all the way off the edge of the quilt that way I'm catching it right at that end and then I come back on and sew all the way down can tell me in the uh, comments Ooh, I'm kind of going sideways Hello. don't do that <laughs> um, do you love binding do you hate binding you're indifferent you know oh it's got to be done because you got to bind your quilt how do you feel <laughs> sometimes it can be a little unwieldy that kind of that part you know it's like eh, whatever I definitely like the um, the part when I'm just finishing it. And sometimes I will finish it, um, well, I always finish by machine, but the reason I finish by machine is time, basically. Finishing by hand is not hard. Um, it's not a pain in the butt. It's not any of that. I think it's, I think it's fine. Um, I just don't have time to do it. So someday I will go back to hand binding the back or the second side, I should say, it's not back. Um, and so sometimes I will start my binding on the front of the quilt like I'm doing now. And sometimes I'll start on the back. Um, I don't really, um, sometimes it's a, it's a choice of like, um, if there's a certain thing I'm trying to do, a certain design or something like that, but usually, it's whatever. <laughs> I'm like, hi, Karen. Oh, thanks, Grendel. Yeah, I, we're having some um, weather here in uh, Colorado, too. It's overcast today, which I kind of like. I'm so ready for, like, fall and winter. Very ready. Well, I know that the cats are going to be excited when this quilt is quilted. They're going to be excited. Because <laughs> I'll be able to, like, actually let them keep it. Because I keep taking it away from them. And I'm like, no, it's not even quilted yet. Stop. They're going to, I just, I can see all of the um, batting coming out. <laughs> I'm like, stop it. You're going to take all the batting out. <laughs> Quick.
Christy, you hate binding. Hi, Patty. I actually thought about um, starting a like a binding service for people <laughs> if they would take machine binding. Because <laughs> I don't know that I want to. It would. It would. I would have to charge a lot if I'm gonna <laughs> do a uh, hand binding on the other side because. That just takes a lot of time. And I'm such a perfectionist, it would take me forever. <laughs> Hi, Kelly. I know, I think that's why I, um, I like doing it. Um, Donna, uh, this is, what I use is called a binding baby. And if you put that in your search, uh, in the search engine, you should be able to find it. So again, I'm just going to uh, mark from the edge, quarter inch, so I know where to stop. You could eyeball it, not a problem. And then I'll just back stitch a couple stitches. And then I'm going to turn it. Again, I have it just pointing straight at that line or straight at me. I always reinforce mine. I don't know why I started doing that. I started doing it and I don't know, I kind of like it. Because <laughs> I'm crazy like that. Okay, now I'm going to take it and I'm going to roll it the other way again. Yes, it is relaxing, Donna. I do agree with you. And if I had time to do it, I totally would. On smaller things, sometimes I'll consider it, but I usually end up just machine binding it anyway. <laughs> it's just so much quicker. Okay. So now, same thing. I am going to flip it up so that it's going straight down and fold it back on itself. And then I'm going to sew a quarter inch from the edge. Ugh, if I can get my chair in. I'm just going to back stitch so I can reinforce it. I just think the corners are probably the, the part where, you know, if there's going to get anything that's going to go, that's going to get pulled or um, it's going to be the end. You know what I mean? Like the corners. So I like making sure those are reinforced a little bit. Oh, I know what I could bring up right now. Um, for those of you guys who get notifications of like when I go live, they the government has started some sort of thing where you have to register your business to be able to send text messages to people. Um, 
even when they have requested um, the, the correspondence or whatever. And so, uh, and it is, it is, look, maybe it's just me. I, I, I'm a quilter, okay? That's what I like to do. I hate having to figure out all kinds of crazy stuff. So, um, apparently the first time that I put all of my business information in, I must have done something wrong. And so they rejected it or something. And then, but they never told me, right? So this last a uh, couple of times I think that I tried sending text messages to remind people about lives it told me that the text messages went through but they really didn't because they had rejected this thing of mine so I got in touch with the company that I use and um, they helped me get it through but now it's gonna be like a week or two before it's going to be complete. So I can't send messages right now. So um, if I get a seam at the corner, I do it the same way. Same way. I just keep doing it. Are you going to show the corners when you flip it? Yes. Yes, I will, Donna. I will do that. And I'm probably going to, I'm usually going to keep these lives at like an hour. Um, but we'll see how long this takes because we're like at a half an hour right now. And I want to at least get it sh started um, when I flip over so you guys can see how I, you know, do when I get to the corners and stuff like that. Absolutely. if um Teresa Louise is still here hey stop doing that what are you doing <laughs> he's coming unwound I'll just throw him up here <laughs> that's funny Teresa Louise I don't know if you're still in here um but maybe you could tell everybody I know that you go live is it on Sundays you go live every Sunday and you could tell them what time and all of that so everybody knows to the corner so I'm going to mark it for a quarter inch look there's a cat hair on it gee how'd that happen <laughs> and if Teresa's not still in here if you guys know you could uh, put it in there because I just don't remember I think it's on Sunday that she goes I usually have to just wait till I see the notification or whatever. All right, so I'm gonna backstitch a little. And then I'm going to turn it so I get that point. Stitch. Okay. So now I'm going to re roll it. <laughs> Jelly Bean, I'm doing your quilt, buddy. Scoochie. Scoochie. <laughs> All right.
He's like, yeah, I know what you're doing. All right. And now again, now you, I know you see this little tail thing. It's, it's just an extra piece of fabric that I didn't trim off whenever I, because it's really not, the binding doesn't go all the way in. That's a little bit of extra fabric. So I'm just going to chop that off so don't get confused. Okay. You just fold it up. And then down. So you have like this little flap. Bloop, bloop. That's normal. <laughs> That's what you should have there. Little flap. my bad I'll pull it through here <laughs> I forgot I my my binding is all over the place now oh my goodness if y'all saw how I did this this uh, quilting and the binding and I didn't trim it okay so y'all just don't look at what I'm doing because this thing is gonna be this is definitely gonna be for the cat <laughs> I'm gonna have to trim it after I'm done uh, doing the the binding here before I flip it over. <laughs> oh goodness! Adventures in starting your your long arming. <laughs> Gotta move this out of the way. Let's make them a nuts. Okay. Note to self after you finish the quilting, square up the quilt. <laughs> goodness oh my goodness <laughs> around 4 p.m. central time on Sunday okay cool 4 central okay cool Two Pacific, which is three Mountain, four Central, five Pacific. Sorry, I keep hitting the computer. <laughs> Our, my keyboard is like buried under the 
under the quilt. And if it touches something, like on the mouse or whatever else, it's like hitting a button. So it might mess with the camera. Sorry about that, guys. It's typing now. My quilt is typing. <laughs> goodness. All right, I'm going to mark the quarter inch. Hi, Debbie. Oh, hi, Soteri. I didn't see you there, honey bun. going to roll it one last time. Well, one last time for this side. <laughs> All right. Let me flip the binding back around. All right, so last one. Gonna fold it up. And then back down. All right. Now this is the, the fourth side. So I'm not going to sew all the way down this time. Now this is a whole quilt, so um, when you're doing smaller projects, obviously you should, you know, leave as much room as you possibly can between the two ends. Um, but for a quilt like this, I'm going to give it like a good 12 to 15 inches just to make sure that I have enough room whenever I'm going to put them together. So I'm gonna just keep an eyeball on that, make sure I'm stopping in enough time. Jelly Bean, you can't sleep on the quilt right now, baby. You have to let mommy finish it. So I have the one end right here and I'm just going to stop right here and I'm going to leave all of this so that it's, I can put them together. So I'm going to uh, do a couple of back stitches forward, back again. 
I just like making it sure it's really secure so I don't have to worry about it. Okay, so now I am going to just to make it easier on me and so that you can see really well. I'm moving the sewing machine a little bit. Okay, so as you can see, I have my pieces like this. And this one will pretty much touch the other side. Um, but I'm going to still leave um, some of this just so that I can not have to work with the whole thing. All right, so now this can move. All right, let's see if I can put that up there so that I don't hit the, the keyboard. Okay. This is the hardest part of doing all of this on camera. I just got to share with y'all. <laughs> all right, so let me see. What are you seeing in the camera? What's this and what's that? Okay, let me try to open that over a bit. See, I keep hitting the keyboard still. Okay, now where are we? Is it more this way? This way, okay. All right, so what I wanna do is I'm gonna take one end and I'm gonna lay it down. And I wanna, I'm gonna try to get it like sort of in the middle of that. So your first cut, it doesn't matter where. You just wanna put it somewhere between those two. So I'm just gonna cut randomly right there. Now I'm gonna take my, my ruler. And if you remember, I told you guys that I, um, cut my binding at two and a quarter inches instead of two and a half. That means that I want this strip, the second one that I haven't cut yet, to overlap this one by two and a quarter inches, okay? So what I'm gonna do is, um, this is a one and a half this way, but I can do two and a half this way, or two and a quarter this way. Okay, so I'm gonna take where the quarter inch is, so this is one, two, and then one quarter, and I'm gonna lay that right down, and that, that quarter line is gonna go right at the edge of my first strip. Okay, if you had a two and a half inch, then you would move it down and cut it at two and a half. Okay, but I'm two and a quarter, so I'm gonna put that there, and I'm lining up my quarter inch, or just any line on your ruler. You just want to line it up with the edge of your quilt. That way you know you're getting a, a straight cut. All right, right there. And then I'm going to take my friction pin and mark right there. So then whenever I, oh, I didn't have to move that there. Uh, <laughs> okay, when I overlap them, I want to be able to see where my first, uh, my bottom binding is and the top binding. And because of that, then I can still see under here where that quarter inch is going to be, right? And I can even see where I drew the line on the wrong strip, but that's okay. You can, you can write, draw your line on all the strips if you want to. Um, <laughs> it's this strip that you want to write, draw the line on. So two and a quarter, and I'm gonna draw that line right there. Boop. And then I know where to cut. So I just cut it off right there. Okay. Now we're going to get it ready to join the pieces together. So what I do is I take the two pieces and where they are sewn up to, as you can see, they are both sewn to right there. And all this is like the part where I'm going to be sewing down. I still haven't sewed it down yet. And I'm going to take uh, a wonder clip and I'm going to put a pin, a, a wonder clip right there. And then just to keep the, it, you know, the big pieces out of the way, I just fold it down and put another clip or two, whatever you want. I love clips. So, you know, it's not like it's going to hurt anything to put a whole bunch of clips. You can do whatever you like. Okay. So now once you have your um, your 
sorry. You have this all clipped, and then you've got these two little tails, right? We want to join them together. So you're going to take the one in your right hand, and you're going to open it up, and you're going to lay it right on the table, right there, and you're going to take the other strip. So this one is, it's, here it is, you're going to open it up and flap it down, okay? So just like that, that position. Then you're going to take the other side, and you're going to open it up, and now you need to put them right sides together, and perpendicular to each other. And now you need to make sure that your, I know you probably can't see as well as I'd like you to, um, but you, you want to make sure that it's all squared up. Okay? Com perfectly squared up. It's not like whenever you're attaching your bindings you can like leave a little lip. You can't do that. Um, so where are my pins? Hello? Where did I put them? Oh, <laughs> Of course, could they be any further away? They're like 800 miles away from me. Okay. And, of course, I closed the case, which, you know. Do you do this? Do you fight with it instead of letting go? Of course you fight with it instead of letting go. Who wants to let go? Okay. So then I take a pin, and I want to make sure right in that corner is perfectly lined up. I line the whole thing up, and I put a pin right down this side first and then I put a pin right in the top part this is to make sure that the two edges that I can see are lined up perfectly in the corners and then I take another pin and with it laying nice nice and then I usually, wherever your head is, you want it to go toward the bottom. That way you can pull it out easily. All right, so I pin there to keep that one straight. And then I pin the bottom to keep that one straight. I pin it as much as I can so I don't have to worry about it shifting. I don't have to worry. Okay, so now I'm going to take... my ruler. I'll make sure you guys can see as good as possible. And I'm going to measure just like I would when I'm putting the binding together. I'm going to go from the top left, how you're looking at it, to the bottom right. And I'm going to just draw. I can lift this up a little bit. I see exactly where the corner is. And on this one, I can see exactly where that top corner is. And again, it doesn't have to be exactly perfect. I, I like it to be as well, so I understand what you're thinking. But you really don't. It's pretty forgiving. It's one of those things that it's going to lay like it's supposed to no matter what. As long as you have your corners lined up and you just kind of go from a corner to a corner, you're going to be good. All right. So let me move the sewing machine back. And I'm just going to sew a line right on that line, diagonally. All right, let me see if anyone say anything. MJ, vet, you're making me feel like I need to go bind my UFA, UFO fall wall hanging while it's still fall. <laughs> Joining is the part that always gets you. I know, it always got me too. You can always measure with the piece you cut off since it's two and a quarter inches. You, yes, you could. You could do that. This is the lady that taught me how to bind. Aww. You, <laughs> you're putting it on like a serial killer? Yeah, me too. I'm telling you, until, I, until it clicked with me, I'm not kidding. Every single time I had to put a binding on, I would literally break out in the hives and cry. I, it just... I just, I am so visual, and if you don't show me exactly what to do, like, and, and if I can't see it at your angle, 
it, it's so hard for me. So if you guys need that, I can do a, a, a binding and like put it behind me so that you're looking right over. I mean, I can totally do that. Y'all just let me know. But, um, once I figured out all of this stuff, I tried everything. I tried that stupid binding tool. I tried, I mean, everything, y'all. Everything. And it was terrible. Okay. Hey, Shirley. I saw you did a binding uh, the other day, too. I saw your video. I think I saw it yesterday that I saw, or I saw that it was up for replay or something. Anyway, y'all can also go watch Shirley do it. Because she might do it differently than I do. And then that would, you know, maybe help you. Okay, so here's what I do. Well, I don't need more, but I used to. This is what I used to do whenever I was still very unsure about all of it. Before you cut anything or take any of the pins out, take your, um, your Wonder Clips off. And then just pull it. Like, the pins are still in there, so it's going to be difficult. So, once I get to here and it looks, you know, it looks pretty good, I'll take the pins out. And you'll see it's going to lay flat. So, once you see that it's, it's completely flat and it's fine, then you just finish it like the others. Like the other, uh, whenever you put your binding together. You just take pair of scissors cut it about a quarter an inch away and then I will just do a quick little uh, open press all right and now it's gonna lay flat so then what I'm going to do, and I'm just give it a little to take off that. <laughs> um, I'm just going to finish it. So now I'm going to go back to over here and I'm going to sew down uh, until I hit where I'm at there. And then we're ready to um, turn it around and do the other side. I'll show you all that. Okay. There it is. So now I have the first side of the binding put on and I will show you guys how I, now what I would do if I weren't um, on a live is I would go over to, because I have, a, I have um, a couple of pressing stations this one which is really small and then i have a bigger one um over in the corner where i can lay things out and get things you know properly uh pressed if i were to do that then what i normally do is i would go over i would take the binding i would oh let me move this out of the way I would take it and I would go over and press this down. 
So I take an iron and I press it all the way around so that it's laying flat. And that'll just help me whenever I'm getting to the other side, just so that it's already laying flat here. Um, and I used to actually um, put binder, uh, binder, put the wonder clips in and have it. I don't really do that anymore unless it's for a small project um, because it's just I, I, to me it just takes too much time <laughs> y'all y'all are gonna have a y'all gonna have a recurring theme here um so i usually don't what i'll do is i'll take one side and i will start there after i press it down then i'll just take it to the other side and i start stitching down so let me start showing you that and i'll show you corners because we're at an hour right now so i'm gonna i'm gonna get that part done and then um if you still don't get it and you want me to do it in another uh, live, I can so totally do that. And I also have, um, I do have a video already, maybe even more than one, of how to bind. So you can always go in, um, go on my channel and search for binding or bind. And yeah, um, <laughs> uh, whenever I hear around to it, I think of a round cardboard tube. That's what my auntie called them. <laughs> awesome thanks Feshawn okay so what I do I'm going to start right here I'm just going to um, pull it tight flip it over and I just kind of try to get it in that same because I could see my stitch line right here from the first side and I just want to make sure that my um, binding at least covers that line. You can pull it over further if you want to. Um, you just wanna make sure that you're covering that stitch line so that it's inside the quilt or inside that seam and you won't see it poking out. Now mine, mine don't look at mine right now because mine is completely Craytown from me not knowing what I'm doing uh, with the quilting. That's all that is. <laughs> I fully admit that I'm still learning so um, but you just want to cover that up. All right, so then I'm just going to, again, I'll take one stitch. And I just, I go like a scant eighth of an inch next to the the, the edge there. I, and then I just try to keep it pretty consistent. And I, to, to that end, I go pretty slow. I don't like go real fast or anything like that. To me, that's the secret of having your um, machine bound quilt look uh, what I call decent. <laughs> See, to me, that was even too fast. I, I like to take it pretty slow and I have to be able to see it and my eyes aren't that great, so. And if y'all are going to uh, hand bind it, that is just fine as well. Hand binding is lovely. And I think you have to do it if you're doing like a competition or something, like if you're entering it in a show or something like that. I'm trying to get my quilt out of the way for y'all. Okay, so you guys see how I am binding in a clockwise rotation, right? All right, so I'm about to show you a secret um, to doing the corner. Oh, I think I just sewed right off of the thing. This happens whenever you're, you're doing it live. Anytime you do anything live, that's how you're gonna mess up. I'm just gonna tell y'all right now. Thank goodness this is the cat quilt <laughs> and they are not picky. <laughs> All right, so when I get to about an inch away, inch and a half, two inches, whatever, um, a lot of times what I will do in the corner is I trim, now don't trim any of your stitches, but that very edge, I like to kind of trim it down just a little bit. 
might have gone a little bit too far. Let me try turning it. And you could do this before you start sewing too. You don't have to do it like while you're in the middle of doing it like this. But I just cut that very edge off just to get the little point out. All right. Just gonna sew a little bit more. Okay. You are sewing in a clockwise rotation. So in order for everything to look nice, nice, when you're going in that corner, you don't wanna accidentally like um, sew um, a, 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 like a little wordsy bad words. Um, you don't want like a pucker in it or anything like that. To avoid that, Set your corner in a counterclockwise rotation. What I mean by that is, start, get to the bottom here, fold that part up to where you're gonna wanna sew it. And you can always do this before, like I said, you can prepare your corners before you even sit down to start um, binding or do, finishing the binding. You can have this part ready for you. Um, I'm doing it this way because I'm trying, in the sense of time, I'm trying to hurry up and get it to you guys and, and get it done. But what I would do is I would go to the, take the corner, I get that part folded in, and I put a wonder clip in. Or a pin. You guys, you got, you can use pins. You don't have to use wonder clips. <laughs> That's just what I prefer. Now I go all the way down to the corner and I get it. so that it is pinned all the way to the edge. And then this, just like whenever you're doing your binding and you're lining it up, you want this to sort of line up. So now it looks like a straight line right at the top. Holding that, flip it over toward your wonder clip, pull the wonder clip out and clip it there. So now you've got it going under and then you're, the part that the part that's um, perpendicular to you is now f over this part which is parallel to you okay so it's so now whenever you go in your sewing you're gonna sew right over and you're not gonna have any kind of lip to hit and I just go all the way down And when I'm getting close, because I'm going to hit that um, that wonder clip, I get my stiletto. And when I take that wonder clip out, I just hold it with the stiletto. So it's right there. And I just sew down. Okay. Now a lot of times, especially because this is going to be the cat quilt, I'm gonna just kind of uh, reinforce right in that corner where I go, I take a stitch, I go back, and then I take a stitch. Okay. And then I turn it. And then I continue sewing down. And I'm gonna do that same thing all the way around the quilt. <laughs> so look, it's only, what, three minutes? Oh, it's, it's almost 10 minutes after. <laughs> so um, that's our quilting for today. And um, I think until, I, until this catches on with me, I'm gonna try to do it like every day at 11. I know that right now, I do have things on my calendar that are probably going to coincide with 11 a.m. So if it's going to be at a different time, you will see each day I will schedule what time it's gonna be the next day. And of course, you can always go back and watch the, the replays. They're listed in my live streams um, and they will be there and they'll stay there. Um, 
So uh, yeah, I think I'll do this uh, again tomorrow. I'm not sure what I'm going to work on. If there's anything that you ever want me to do, please just let me know in the comments and I'll try to incorporate that one day. Also, if you are available at 7 a.m. Central, 6 a.m. Mountain, because that's where I am, um, Monday through Friday, go and watch Becky Thompson, Power Thread, Power Tools with Thread, sorry. Um, she's really great. She's got lo loads of tips for uh, traditional piecing, and I think you really like her. And that's where I got the idea to go live every day because she was doing it. So, um, and I didn't, I didn't even realize she was doing it every day. Somebody else told me. So thank you to whoever that was, and um, hopefully this will help me kind of get on track with getting a little bit more sewing done because I would love that. And I'll see you guys tomorrow if you'd like to come and sew with me at 11 a.m. because I don't think I have anything going. 11 a.m. Mountain Time. Uh, bye guys. I'll see y'all tomorrow. I hope. <laughs> Don't get, forget to give me a thumbs up. Subscribe. Ring the bell. All that good stuff. <laughs> bye.